Hey, Virgo. Welcome to the February 2018 reading for my lovely Virgo family. I am a Virgo moon. So this is pretty tender, intimate space I share with you all. Um, I hope that the decision-making process in January, as you clarified, was kind and clear and easy for you all. I really do. Um, and now we are here in Aquarius season, your sixth house. Um, a very interesting placement for you. I mean, you guys actually are the sixth house rulers, right? You are, Virgo is sixth house energy. So in some ways, getting into sixth house alignment here with Aquarius is a really great, great energy for you. And we have that Aquarius, that eclipse in Aquarius. That's a partial solar eclipse on February 15th. Not a big visual spectacle um, necessarily, depending on where you are, but um, energetically, Nonetheless, it is going to be quite a powerful time. And what's really funny is it's an eclipse in your sixth house, right? So day-to-day -day routine, your at, how you serve, your health habits, all of these, these great things that you guys already kind of have on lockdown is having a little bit of a moment of eclipse. We are, we are looking internal at um, what, what that means for you. And in fact, what the note that came out for me before I even thought about the placements for Virgo, before I even thought about what, what matters for Virgos this month or what, what that would mean for Virgos this month, the first note that came out from just listening in and sitting here was what does it mean to do projects out of joy and inspired action? And what does it mean to do projects out of duty? You know, Virgos, I admire you so much. I admire the fact that you will show up time and again to things that you have decided to commit to. And I that you will commit 100% to the things that you have chosen to, to commit to. And when a Virgo chooses to commit to something, that is really meaningful. I think maybe people don't realize that that is like, once you get that, like, that is the biggest thing. And because Virgos who allow somebody close in like that do it very authentically and will stick with it. But sometimes, Virgos, despite the fact that you're a mutable sign and you have you have the ability to shift and, and roll with things as they change, you sometimes tend to get in positions where you're giving of yourself way past the point at which you should. And you get tired and mired down. And, and then, you know, sometimes I think it's easy to forget even why you are doing anything. You know, why are you doing anything? It just starts to feel exhausting and repetitive and empty. But you, you're so dedicated and, and clear-sighted and focused that you get stuck in it. So that was the feeling that I got. And it's really... You know, quite honestly, these cards have been coming out. I'm doing three sets of three. And and you're being asked to refresh some things. But more than that, Virgos, the cards are really good. The cards are really good for you, actually. And I think this is because you this eclipse and the eclipses themselves. So we have your 6th and 12th houses are getting lit up by the Leo eclipse on January 31st and the Aquarius eclipse on February 15th. These are your 6th and 12th houses, your day-to-day -day routines in the physical and your emotional connection, the collective ascended energy of the 12th house, the psychic side, the secret side are both being lit up by this and it's revolutionizing where you're putting your energy and how you're, how you are, sharing of yourself in the world. So I'm going to show you the first three cards. This is the way the month is starting out. And there's a lot going on here. We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Swords, and the Empress. Now you know what's interesting about this. This is almost passive energy for you. Like the way you're going to be experiencing it is, it's not passive really. It's actually very deliberate in the fact that this is energy that says to you that you need to deliberately choose to accept joy and, and inspired actions into your life. You need to deliberately choose to step back from pushing on things that are not serving you anymore. Now, what is this? I'm getting goosebumps actually right now. And this is the first time I've gotten goosebumps doing readings this month. 
Um, you're halfway through the pack, but oh my gosh, you guys. The Wheel of Fortune is one of the my favorite cards. It's really exciting energy. This is this is shifting things for you. Wheel of Fortune is an opportunity, an answer, a green light, a circumstance that takes you to new horizons. Now, this doesn't have to be huge. This can be, you know, a new project at work that really lights you up. This can be a conversation with a new friend that really invigorates you and opens up a new possible project or collaboration together. This can be a lover coming into your life. This can be um, one of those kismet things where somebody you haven't talked to for a long time, you run into them. That's the kind of thing this is actually more than anything. It's somebody that maybe you th were thinking about for the last couple of months, like a friend or a colleague or somebody that you've wanted to talk to, and then you run into them on the street and you end up talking for five hours. That's what the Wheel of Fortune is like. And it's one of those things where it's somebody or it's something that even if it's small, even if it's not on the surface big, is changing things around for you, <sighs> is is opening up, unlocking something in your mind, and your spirit, in your journey that is helping you along. And that is just very magical energy. I, I'm not going to, you know, there's not much else I can say about the Wheel of Fortune other than it's, it brings in that sense of magic and synchronicity and alignment that is really, you know, the, the good stuff. And and what's interesting is what these this placement is telling me is that, you know, it's coming out with the Four of Swords and the Empress. Now, these are energies of rest, owning your space, um, sitting back, allowing things to unfold in their own time. This is, this is energy that is very much about you taking some time. Honestly, what I'm seeing here, you guys, is a really big sense of charisma and, like, I almost feel, Virgos, like you are going to be extremely attractive this month. In fact, I think um, Venus is going into Pisces relatively early in the month. I can't remember the date. But, you know, the Empress represents Venus. And, you know, Venus in Pisces is really good for Virgos because that is your seventh house of relationships. So I do think you guys are going to be extremely attractive to, in partnerships. Like, just in general, you're probably going to be looking good. You're probably going to just be bringing in energy. So that Wheel of Fortune is kind of coming after you. Um, and, and partially what I'm seeing here, too, is that, you know, if you feel like you are, you are duty-bound to check up on somebody or call somebody up and make sure that they're still on for the date or <laughs> make sure that they're, they're still interested in you, don't do it unless it feels like it's full of joy. Don't do it unless it feels like it's something that makes you feel good. Seriously, listen in and feel your body. And if something feels natural and fun and easy, do it. And if it doesn't, relax. Sit back because you have some kind of attractive magnetism going on here that is going to bring you what you need. And, and like I said, it doesn't mean you're not doing anything. The difference is doing things because you feel like you should because you are used to being the responsible party that takes care of everything for everybody and consistently does that. That's not always joyful for you guys. I know this, all right? It's not always joyful for you to be the to have to be the one. Wouldn't it be nice for you to be the one who only did things when it really felt good? Wouldn't it be nice for you to be the one who was checked up on? Wouldn't it be nice for you to be the one who got the phone call that said, "Hey, I've been thinking about you." Wouldn't that be nice? I think it's I think this is a time for you to maybe experiment with what that feels like. Um because damn it, you guys. <laughs> You can't always be there for everybody, and it's it's only fair that you get a chance to experience that. In fact, you guys, there's romance. This is romance, and like I said, a lot of energies are going into Pisces pretty early on in the month of February. We are in Aquarius for a minute, um, but then we're shifting right into Pisces pretty quickly. Um, so February tends to have more of that relational energy for you guys. And, you know, I'll show you these next three cards, but it's it's speaking to this theme again, though. I will say that. So we have Two of Cups, Page of Wands, the Devil. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is, this is important. This is really important with your intimate one-on-one -on -one relationships. And for the, you know, a lot of you, I'm sure, are in relationships, 
Um, and this doesn't even have to be romantic. This can also just be very close friendships, very close family relationships, even very close coworker relationships. Anybody you're really working closely with one on one, these relationships are getting a spotlight this month. Now, we saw that first with you guys kind of having to hold back when it doesn't feel natural for you. Here's another layer to this. So we are in our second three cards. So we're getting close to the eclipse. We're getting more into Pisces season here. We have the two of cups. So this is really good energy. This is reciprocal energy. This is that vibe where, you know, there is an even exchange. There's an even exchange of effort and care. And there's an, a natural understanding. So there's balance here. So I'm seeing a lot of you have this, actually. Especially if you allow the other party to step up and do their part. And I think sometimes Virgos, it is very hard for you to do that. I think it's very hard for you to allow the other person to do some of that work because you're so, you're so consistent and good about being the one showing up. But I see this for you though. That's great, right? Could be with the fiery sign here. We have the page of wands, um, passion, creativity, intensity. And you know what? The page of wands is perfectly capable of showing up. So let them, you know, page of wands also brings in news, brings in clarity, brings in maybe some really good conversations that you need to have. I would not be surprised Virgos, you know, especially with that wheel of fortune at the beginning of the month, that really colors the whole month for me. It's like, oh, you're going to have a lot of that kismet kind of timed out conversation kind of energy majorly in February. So keep that in mind. But the page of wands here, um, you know, it's that thing of having passionate conversations, parsing through what reciprocity looks like, parsing through what you really want in relationships. This could be a time where you're presented with an opportunity to actually say, that doesn't work for me, or I'm not interested in that, or I would like this. This could be that kind of conversation. And here's the thing, the devil's the third card in this. So the devil is the flip side of the lovers um, in a lot of senses. I mean, a lot of times the devil is, you know, considered that because the lovers are here in this card, but they're chained up. So a lot of times, you know, when this is speaking about relationships, it's talking about obsession, it's talking about being duty bound or, or stuck in a cycle. And I do, you know, when you look at the two of cups and you look at the devil, they're very different energies, right? And I think some of you may be very tempted to hide your actual needs in an attempt to keep the balance but in reality, that's not bringing you much joy. It's bringing you a lot of stress. It can bring you burnout, depression, um, self-doubt. All sorts of things can come up with this. Um, you may also be dealing with a Capricorn, right? Page of Wands or the Devil. These could be a, a couple different personalities you're dealing with. Um, and both of these are perfectly capable of expressing their own needs. But you may find that, you know, you have to... Take that extra beat and make sure that you're saying those things. Make sure that you're expressing what you need. Making sure that you are, are involved in things that don't make you feel chained up, duty bound, but feel joyful and playful. And I do think you might find you hit a really important little balancing point conversations or scenarios where you get the choice of either really expressing that, which I'm kind of seeing you doing quite honestly, or holding back and sticking with the duty, sticking with the the kindness and the giving that you have um, in order to keep some kind of consistency. But I kind of see you guys coming to some really good places with this these conversations, quite honestly, though. I don't really see it becoming negative or, or, or derisive. In fact, the more truthful you can be with those people you're really close to or the people you really care about, the people that, you know, get on that special Virgo list of your loyal attention to detail and your consistency and your showing up and your everything that you have, those people, you know, when you have those conversations with those close people, it's giving you the opening to live a much better life. And honestly, the end of this month, once we're fully in Pisces season, is really good for you guys because we have... The last three cards are fantastic and simple and easy, and I like it. We have the Ace of Cups, the Nine of Cups, and the Ace of Pentacles. Can you get better than this? I mean, this is just good times all around. Ace of Cups is a beginning in a new relationship. So, or, or a renewal. 
right? This is a renewal of hope. This is a renewal of belief in things being good. And this is really, speaking of balance, Ace of Cups inherently has that because water works in such a way that it it's not, it, it, it flows, right? So there's a flow here. There's a, there's a return to hope. There's an opening. For those of you who have to set some firm boundaries with people and like maybe even ask them to just step back a little bit and check in a couple months, there might be some of you that have that kind of thing. Um, it's opening up the space for there to be somebody and people around you who are much more supportive of you. So we have the Ace of Cups here, re, like a renewal and, and hope and new beginnings. This is really romantic. And, it, you know, that's bringing you some kind of emotional satisfaction, like almost it's kind of like this month is asking you to flex some of those conversational muscles. And the reward is that you get to indulge a little bit. I think the end of the month could be a time for just celebrating, relaxing, really enjoying, like just taking in every second of it. You know, when you're just really enjoying um, the people you're around and the, and the activities that you're doing, and it just feels like you can just savor it like a really good meal. That's what the Nine of Cups is like. And I think you guys have been overdue for a period like this for a while. And not only that, but we have the Ace of Pentacles. Now, this is an allusion to your finances and to your material world. And honestly, here's the thing. So much of this month has been about the emotional work you're doing and the communication work you're doing and how you are choosing between actions based in inspired inspiration and joy and actions that are based in duty, right? It's a lot of homework. You're doing a lot of work, but you're clearing out some space inside of yourself in doing that. And that always improves your money. That always improves what's coming in financially. That always improves uh, your material world and also your health. Really, truly your health. You guys can run your batteries down really low when you're pushing so hard to do everything all the time. And it can cause things to break down and it, and it does disrupt the flow. It does disrupt your ability to accept new things in, right? Because if you have, think about it like um, a nice tidy closet, right? If you, if some new wonderful gadget comes into your home, you have a nice place to put it. Whereas if you have one of those closets just filled to the brim with like blankets you never use and games you don't even like, if you got something that you really valued and you wanted to store in your house, you wouldn't even have anywhere to put it, right? So it's a similar thing. And I think this month, you're just kind of taking some time to just refine that. I think it's going to be relatively easy for you to do, though. That's the thing. I don't see a lot of resistance. I see you kind of just feeling it and, and stepping. Like each next step is going to be so obvious for you that I don't think it's going to be difficult. So I'm really excited, you guys. I'm going to pull one card from my Cosmic Tarot one last card because I'm so intrigued by these two aces at the top. Truly. I mean, you started with the wheel of fortune this month, which is that, that kismet synchronicity energy. And you're ending it with these new beginnings, these fresh infusions of love and money that are coming from you being honest and setting healthy boundaries. My gosh, you guys, all that decision making you had to do in January, I think you're coming into February even more like Ooh, Queen of Wands is coming out. Oh man, you guys, you have some fire. You have some strong personalities in the mix this month. Because we have the Page of Wands and the Devil and the Empress. And these are all energies that kind of hold their own. Queen of Wands is no different, right? This is fire energy. For those of you dealing with some fire personalities in your life, you are going to have to allow them to step up to the plate and to, and to communicate your needs to them. You know, fire is very good at, they may have a little bit of a temper, but they tend to want to do what is best if they know what that is. They like to know what actions to take. So don't let their, their intensity push you over. Now the other thing with the Queen of Wands, timing. Queen of Wands kind of pays attention. So pay attention to the way people are, um, are interacting with you, giving or showing up. If they aren't, you know, the Queen of Wands will sit and watch and take, take note, and then she will take action that is appropriate once she has enough information. So that's another way to kind of tackle this month, is it may be kind of one of those times where you watch the people that stop showing up when you're not constantly helping them along, and you make decisions based on that. And you watch the people that do show up when you step back and you let them show up. 
you're honing your space, Virgos. And I think that's so important. This really, really empowering energy. I'm so excited. I'm really proud of you guys. I'm so impressed by you all. I love you so much. You guys are just amazing people. And I do feel a deep part of your family. Um, I am always striving to not just give through duty and through <laughs> through my consistency for detail and and consistency, and just trying to parse out what why, why am I doing this? Am I doing this because everybody's used to me doing this for them, or am I doing this because I love doing it? And I think you know it's a it's always a great lesson. So I'm sending you guys all my love, my Virgo family. I will see you in March for more uh, fun stuff coming up. I'm wishing all the best and lots of love and renewal and hope. And talk to you soon. Bye.